Good day everyone, we are the group 5 and we will be reporting about worship and festivals in an Egyptian temple. My name is Anna Stui and I will be identifying to you what is an Egyptian temple and what is a cult temple. First is, what is an Egyptian temple? Egyptian temples were also dwelling places. They were homes for Egy Egyptian gods and goddesses, as well as for the living who worshipped them, which we knew as the pharaoh and the Egyptian community or the Egyptian people. While each temple was built to honor a god or a goddess, the temple once built was a common hangout bringing people together for a variety of reasons. It is where people mingle, interact, and talk about their lives. So, there were also commercial centers and also the temple served as a meeting place for government to conduct business and serving as centers for learning. Whether the temple was huge and beautiful or a small and isolated one, all temples were the center of Egyptian daily life. The temple cities were the heart of each community. Since Egyptian temples are not only made for kings, pharaohs, and other people or the Egyptian community, but as well as for the gods and goddesses, we can conclude that there is a worship happening in that place. There are two principal kinds of temple can be distinguished as call temples and funerary temples. So let us first define the funerary temple. Funerary temples are where private tombs resided and it is most basic purpose was to provide offerings for the use of the dead king and to ensure his beneficial survival in the afterlife. But since we are focusing on worship, let us move forward to the cult temple. So the cult temple in Egyptian temple are centered on the daily tending and worship of an image of a deity and were analogous to the pattern of human life. The cult temple is where cultic activities are being made. It is where offerings to a god were received, incense were burnt, specified clothing are being worn, and dances were performed. The function of the cult temple was to provide a hidden place for the statue of the god in a place of theater. The temple was a possible site of Hev Seb or coronation celebration, but mostly importantly, it was the house of the god. Cult temples are proof that Egyptian people worship and that they believe in higher beings which are the god and goddesses. So let us let us move on to the next topic which are the Egyptian gods and goddesses. Egyptian gods and goddesses. Egypt had one of the largest and most complex pantheons of gods of any civilization in the ancient world. Over the course of Egyptian history, hundreds of gods and goddesses were worshipped. Here are a few of the most important deities to know. First, Osiris, one of Egypt's most important deities. He was the god of the underworld. He symbolizes death, resurrection, and the cycle of Nile floods that Egypt railed on for agricultural fertility. He is the eld eldest brother of Set Nephthys and his wife Isis. Second, Isis, as the wife of the god of the underworld, Isis was also one of the main deities concerned with rites for the dead. Along with her sister Nephthys, Isis acted as divine mourner, and her maternal care was often depicted as extending to the dead in the underworld. She was also known as the goddess of health, marriage, and fertility, and Horus mother. Third, Horus. Depicted as a falcon or as a man with a falcon's head, Horus was a sky god associated with war and hunting. He was also the embodiment of the divine kingship and in some eras, the reigning king was considered to be a manifestation of Horus. He is the son of Osiris and Isis and his symbol, the Eye of Horus, is the most commonly used in Egypt. Fourth, Set. Set was the god of chaos, violence, deserts, and storms. In the Osiris myth, he is the murderer of Osiris. In some versions of the myth, he tricks Osiris into laying down in a coffin and then seals it shut. Fifth is Ta. Ta was the head of a triad of gods, worshipped at Memphis. The other two members of the triad were Ta's wife, the lion-headed goddess Sekhmet, and the god Nefertem, who may have been the couple's son. Ta was also known as creator god or maker of things and a patron to craftsmen. 
and his Greek counterpart is Hephaestus, the divine blacksmith. Sixth is Ra, one of several deities associated with the sun. The god Ra was usually represented with a human body and the head of a hawk. It was believed that he sailed across the sky in a boat each day and then made a passage through the underworld each night, during which he would have to defeat the snake god Apophis in order to rise again. He was also known as God of Sun, Order, Kings, and Sky, and he has shared characteristics with the god Horus. Seventh, Hathor. The goddess Hathor was usually depicted as a cow, as a woman with the head of a cow or as a woman with cow's ears. Hathor embodied motherhood and fertility and it was believed that she protected women in childbirth. She also had an important funerary aspect being known as the Lady of the West. Tombs were generally built on the west bank of the Nile. In some traditions, she would welcome the setting sun every night, leaving people hope to be welcomed into the afterlife in the same way. And in ancient Egyptian religion, she was the goddess of sky, women, and fertility. 8. Anubis Anubis was concerned with funerary practices and the care of the dead. He was usually represented as a jackal or as a man with the head of a jackal. The association of jackals with death in funerals likely arose because Egyptians would have observed jackals scavenging around cemeteries. Anubis is also the presider of the embalming process and accompanying dead kings in the afterworld. He would place their hearts on the side of scale and feather on the other side to judge if they are worthy to proceed into the afterlife. Ninth, Thought Thought, the god of writing and wisdom, could be depicted in the form of a baboon or a sacred ibis, or as a man with the head of an ibis. He was believed to have invented language and the hieroglyphic script and to serve as a scribe and advisor to the gods. As the god of wisdom, Thought was said to possess knowledge of magic and secrets unavailable to the other gods. Tenth, Bastet. In her earliest forms, the cut goddess Bastet was represented as a woman with the head of a lion or a wild cat. She took the less ferocious form of a domestic cat in the first millennium BCE. She was also called Bast, and she is the daughter of the sun god Ra. Eleventh, Amon. Before rising to national importance in the New Kingdom, the god Amon was worshipped locally in the southern city of Thebes. Amon was a god of the air and the name probably means the hidden one. He was usually represented as a man wearing a crown with two vertical plumes. His animal symbols were the ram and the goose. The Ancient Egyptian Festivals Since the ancient Egyptians knew that their gods were always present and doing things for them, such as Ra raising the sun, Kunsu traveling across the night sky bringing the moon at night, Bes allowing babies to be born and so on. The people did daily worship to these gods, but not formal worshipping on weekly worshipping at the temple, but these formal worships were in the form of festivals. In some cases, the details of what were on at these gatherings have been lost, but for many, they are known in great detail. The festivals mark the progression of the year, not on the stop of time of thought, and the year would end in the same celebration with which it had begun, thus emphasizing the cyclical, eternal nature of life. The first one is the Wepet Renpet Festival. This festival celebrates the beginning of the new year when the star Sotis or Sirius disappears from the night sky, then appears at the eastern horizon at the sunrise. It also celebrated the death and rebirth of Osiris and the rejuvenation and rebirth of the land and the people. The festival was a kind of movable feast as it depended on the inundation of the Nile River. Feasting and drinking were a part of this festival as they were the most and the celebration would last for days. The length varied dependent on the time period. Solemn rituals related to the death of Osiris were observed as well as singing and dancing to celebrate his rebirth. The call and response of poem known as The Lamentations of Isis and Neptis was recited at the beginning to call Osiris to his feast. The second one is Wag a Festival. This festival was to honor the souls of the deceased as they made their journey into the afterlife. 
Held 17 days after New Year's Day, it's one of the oldest festivals celebrated by the Egyptians. It was first started in the Old Kingdom, just like the Wepet Rentet Festival. During this festival, people would make small boats out of paper and set them toward the west on graves to indicate a serious death and people would float a shrines of paper and the waters of the Nile River for the same reason. The third one is the Tech of Festival, also known as the Feast of Drunkenness. This festival was dedicated to Hathor, the Lady of Drunkenness, and commemorated in the time when humanity was saved from the destruction by beer. According to the story, Ra had become weary of people's endless cruelty and nonsense and so sent Sekhmet to destroy them. She took to her test with Enantisiism, tearing people apart and drinking their blood. Ra is satisfied with the destruction until the other gods point out to him that if he wanted to teach people a lesson, he should stop the destruction before no one was left to learn from it. Ra then ordered the goddess of beer, Tenenet, to dye a large quantity of the brew and has it delivered to Dendera. Right in Sekhmet's path of destruction, she finds it and, thinking it is blood, drinks it all, falls asleep, and wakes up as the gentle and beneficent Hathor. Next is the Opet Festival. One of the most important festivals in which the king was rejuvenated by the god Amun and Thebes. It was observed during the Middle Kingdom but grew in popularity in the New Kingdom of Egypt, where in the 20th dynasty, it was celebrated for 20 days. During this festival, the priest would first uh, wash and dress the statue of Amun and then carry it out of the temple and through the streets of Thebes, which were lined with people waiting to see the god. The statue was then transported to Luxor by foot in earlier times and later on a barge. Once at the temple of Luxor, the king would enter the presence of the god in the inner sanctum and emerge forgiven of sins and rejuvenated to continue his reign. The fifth one is the Hathor Festival. It is held annually at Dendera, the main site of Hathor's cult. This festival celebrated the birth of the goddess and her many blessings. It was similar to the Tag Festival in many aspects. This festival dates from the Old Kingdom and was among the most anticipated. The cult of Hathor was extremely popular and just as with the festival for Nate, the celebration was well attended wherever it was held. As with the tech festival, participants were encouraged to overindulge in alcohol while engaging in singing and dancing in honor of the goddess. There may also have been a sexual component to the celebration similar to the tech festival, but this interpretation while not at all inconsistent or incredible, is not universally accepted. Number 6. Sokar Festival or Festival of Kaya Sokar was an agricultural god in the early dynastic period in Egypt whose characteristics were later taken on by Arises. In the Old Kingdom, the Sokar Festival was merged with the solemn Kaya Festival of Arises which observed his death. It was a summer affair in its early form but grew to include Rises Resurrection as well and was celebrated in the late period of ancient Egypt for almost a month. People planted Rises gardens and crops during the celebration which honored the god as the plants sprung from the earth, commemorating Rises rebirth from the dead. The planting of crops during the festival no doubt dates back to the early worship of Sakar. Number 7. Based Festival This was the celebration of the goddess Bastet at her cult center of Bubastis and another very popular festival. It honored the birth of the cat goddess Bastet who was the guardian of the heart and home and protector of women, children, and women's secrets. Herodotus claims that Bastet's festival was the most elaborate and popular in Egypt. 
Egyptologist Geraldine Pinch citing Herodotus claims, A woman who freed from open strings during the annual festival of Bubastis. They celebrated the festival of the goddess by drinking, dancing, making music, and displaying their genitals. This raising of the skirts by the woman, described by Herodotus, exemplified the freedom from normal constraints often observed at festivals but, in this case, also had to do with fertility. Number 8. Min Festival Min was the god of fertility, virility, and production from the pre-dynastic period in Egypt. He is usually represented as a man standing with an erect penis holding a veil. The Min Festival was probably celebrated in some form starting in the early dynastic period but is best attested to in the New Kingdom and afterwards. Number 9. Sad Festival Usually given as the Hep Sad Festival, this celebration honored the king and revitalized him. It was held every 30 years of the king's reign in order to ensure he was still in harmony with the will of the gods and physically fit to rule Egypt. The festival began with a grand procession held in front of the priests, nobles, and the public. The king would need to run around an enclosed space such as the temple complex of Saqqara in order to prove he was still fit and in later eras would fire arrows towards the four cardinal directions as a symbol of his power over the land and his ability to bring other nations under Egypt's influence. Number 10. Wadi Festival or the Beautiful Feast of the Valley. Similar in many ways to the King Ming Festival in China and the Day of the Dead in Mexico and elsewhere, the Beautiful Feast of the Valley honored the souls of the deceased and allowed for the living and dead to celebrate together while at the same time honoring Amun. How did Egyptians feel about their gods? Gods were loved. In each temple, the courtyard or the land around the temple was bustling with people. The face of the people showed no sign of fear, and people loved their gods and honoring them was a joyful thing. When visiting a temple, women were jewelry jangling with bangles, and they brought temple offerings of foods and good they had made, such as freshly baked bread, crisp vegetables, and woven baskets. If the ancient Egyptians did not get something they had asked the temple god for, they might whip the statue of their god just a bit to let him or her know how they felt. They didn't fear their gods at all. Although the Egyptians believed their gods to be present in the world around them, contact between the human and divine realms was mostly limited to specific circumstances. The Egyptians therefore believed that in death, they would exist on the same level as the gods and understand their mysterious nature. Religion was a way for Egyptians to explain their surroundings such as the annual Nile flooding. Daily happenings such as the sun setting and rising were also explained through religion. Deities were modeled after humans as in they lived and died and needed sustenance to survive. And in conclusion, Egyptian temples are used both for religious and social reasons or purposes. Egyptian temples were built for the official worship of the gods and in commemoration of the pharaohs in ancient Egypt and regions under Egyptian control. Temples were seen as houses for the gods or kings to whom they were dedicated. Communal gatherings for worship took place during festivals. These festivals, known as Heb, allowed people to experience the god intimately give thanks for gifts that were given, and make requests for divine favors. The purpose of most of the festivals was to allow the people to behold the gods with their own eyes. Particular images of the gods, sometimes carried in portable shrines, were taken out of the temple sanctuaries and carried through the streets or sailed on the Nile. Stations of the gods were erected throughout the various cities in order to provide stages for the processions. Oracles were conducted on these festivals as the images of the deities moved in certain directions to indicate negative or positive responses to the questions posed by the faithful. These public gatherings also helped to maintain the belief structure of the culture in that everyone who attended was encouraged in the traditional understanding of how the world operated.
through the will of the gods as interpreted by the priests and implemented by the king.